Welcome to Trading the Close on this Tuesday. I'm Tony Valier with Verified Investing. And here's what's making headlines today. Construction of new homes surges to a six-month high, jumping almost 15 percent in November. About 102 million Google users will share $630 million in compensation as part of a Play Store settlement. And you have two more days to grab an Apple Watch Series 9 before Apple halts sales due to a patent dispute. Well, some of the stocks making the biggest moves today include Affirm, Chewy, and Enphase Energy. Let's get a quick check of the market just minutes before the close and the rally continues. We are seeing all green again. The S&P 500 up 24 points, the Dow up 220 points today, and the Nasdaq up 91 points at this hour. My special guest today is Anthony Georgiades, co-founder of Pastel Network and general partner at Innovating Capital, a technology fund focused on disruptive companies and digital assets. Anthony, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I love saying your last name, Georgiades. Am I saying that right? And is it Italian? Um, yeah, you are saying it correct. It's, uh, it's Greek. It's uh, close Greek. Enough. Okay, okay. Well, before we get into the market action, explain the mission of Pastel Network and what you all do. Yeah, absolutely. Pastel Network is a Web3 company that's really focused on building software infrastructure solutions to really power the next phase of the internet and internet-based economies, internet-based businesses, whatever it might be. So from gaming applications to financial applications, we're building security, storage, authentication, a variety of different tools to really help power these future builders. So let's talk about the market action. Any big takeaways from today's trading regarding cryptocurrencies? I know you follow many. Yeah, I mean, crypto in general, it's it's been interesting the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, today in particular, I'd say is, you know, relatively you know, unchanged and not necessarily, you know, super um, momentous what's in any one direction. But over the last couple of weeks, you know, I think we've seen a bout of risk on movement. Um, you know, you've seen it in the broader equity markets as well. It seems like a lot of traders have been listening to what they, you know, want to hear from the Fed and maybe ignoring kind of the broader sentiment with regards to rates, but focusing more on the short term a message that's coming out and there's been a lot of risk on activity and it seems like a reinvigor reinvigorated appetite for cryptos. Um, there's obviously a variety of factors that have to do with that. There is a lot of uncertainty with regards to Binance over the last several months. And I think the you know, settlement that they reached in terms of the fine that they paid, a lot of the new management shifts has given the market a lot more certainty and stability with centralized exchanges moving forward, as well as really a bounce back in a lot of the venture capital institutional interest in crypto assets. Now, your bio says you're a crypto native. So how early on did you get involved with crypto and what specific currency did you invest in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got involved in crypto uh, back in 2017, actually from the lens of a developer. Um, I was doing open source programming for a couple early Ethereum dApps, um, basically Ethereum applications that were pretty novel and innovative at the time fell in love with the space and launched Innovating Capital later that year to really focus on Web3 and digital asset investing. Uh, we've been early investors in a variety of different projects, ranging from Ethereum and Solana to Injective and obviously Pastel Network. What made you fall in love with it? Crypto to me means so much with respect to really how it can change and impact you know the world and how we think about money, how we think about building, how we think about the economy, or really how we think about interacting across the globe. Obviously, crypto is a, a broad term. Um, you have use cases that really serve peer-to-peer -peer transactions, digital currencies, cross-exchange, cross-border remittances, forms of payment, safe havens, commodities, you name it. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the world of Web3, which really opens up the door for a variety of new commercial and enterprise applications that are really predicated on core tenets around accessibility, democratization of certain data, features, whatever it might be. 
and really this sort of kind of wealth transfer back to really the underlying user itself and the holder of data. Um, so, you know, really the underlying both technological advantages as well as some of those philosophical components have really been massive drivers of my motivation to push forward the world of Web3. There's a lot to it. And so for those who are still curious about crypto, still trying to understand it and not yet invested in it, when should they buy? Is is now a good time to buy? You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I bought Bitcoin in the couple hundred dollar range. I bought Bitcoin greater than 60,000 range, you know, so it's an asset that I am always kind of accumulating and holding for the long term. Um, you know, I, I view it as a variety of different <clears throat> diversification components to the broader portfolio. You obviously have, you know, features of it that are very risk on oriented. You have certain functions of it that offer idiosyncratic exposure to monetary policy and, and broader diversification. And then you have a broader base of potential Web3 companies and new token based businesses. So my, my lens is generally speaking, you know, we're still in the early stages where I'm a fundamental believer that it's always a great time to be acquiring and, and building a portfolio in the Web3 world, you know, that being said, obviously, when you have certain more frothy or risk on markets, um, that is also a time where things can be a little bit more volatile. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend retail investors or even institutional investors to just pile on at any point in time without really having done the requisite diligence and analysis of what they're holding. Yeah, you got to educate yourself, right? Well, there is an uh, anticipation, great anticipation of an ETF approval for Bitcoin. So if that does not happen, what kind of impact do you think that could have on Bitcoin? Yeah. The Bitcoin ETF component, you know, from, from my standpoint, at some point in the future, it will happen. Um, it's just a matter of when and a matter of how. And we evolved in a variety of different ways. You know, we have obviously commodity-based products, futures-based products that are obviously more, um, that are not spot settled the way that some of these new instruments that are coming out are planning to take the shape and form of. You know, that being said, I think that today there is sufficient institutional interest and sufficient guardrails that have been set up, whether that's security protocols, qualified custodians, whatever it might be, that have led us this far on the pathway to approval for these products. And if it's not now, I do believe fundamentally it'll be sometime in the near to medium term. Okay, well, we will wait and see, right? Uh, we did a survey asking people what their top investment priority is for the upcoming year, and 57% said cryptocurrency. I read you think 2024 will be a significant year for the crypto industry. Why do you feel that way? Mm hmm mm hmm you know, there's a variety of reasons. There have been, when you go through really the market environment as we have over the last couple of years, obviously a dramatic shift in monetary policy, large bouts of fraud, manipulation, technological dysfunctionality, FTX, Terra Luna, Three Arrows, you know, you name it. Um, it's really dissuaded a lot of market participants for some time. And during that period, there's been a tremendous amount of players in the space that have continued to fundamentally build technologically differentiated products with core competitive positioning that are coming to a point in time where they're seeing you know, viable commercial applications with really revenue, revenue generating opportunities. And so what's exciting to me is where we're moving away from the pure speculative component to it. Yeah and towards more true price discovery across certain digital assets in the ecosystem. And I think a lot of that will come in 2024 when there is also that better backdrop on certainty around monetary policy and a variety of different geographical and global factors that are driving interest to centralized assets. Well, I know you specialize in NFTs. Um, the concept is still confusing to many. So um, why should investors consider adding NFTs to their portfolio? Mm -hmm. You know, NFTs are, are definitely one of, of many things that we focus on. And I'd say, broadly speaking, I think there is a, a misperception of what NFTs are and what they are not. Um, we've seen one specific use case that's emerged tremendously, you know, profile pictures, digital art, things like that. NFTs represent much more. Obviously, any sort of asset that can be 
really immutable in the sense of it's slow moving or stale, you know, think about your identity or a deed of trust or a piece of IP or copyright, whatever that might be, that can be represented and effectively traded on the blockchain using this sort of new technological standard. If things go the way that we envision them to in 5, 10, 15 years, NFTs will embody a tremendous amount of how we interact with a variety of applications, but it'll just be the underlying technological standard and we won't be throwing around the word NFT. Uh, but I would say that it is something that everybody should have a fundamental understanding of now, because I do think it's going to really change the landscape of how we view and interact with the internet in the next decade plus. Well, I'm hoping you can help us with that and come back for um, a longer interview just focused on NFT so we can really um, clarify everything. I think it's fascinating and I know so many people are very interested in it. Um, Anthony, tell everyone where they can find you on social media. Where are your, what are your handles? Yeah, absolutely. It's at P Anthony LG. Um, so you can find me there. Also go to our website, innovating.capital. And then you mentioned Pastel as well, pastel.network, where you can definitely learn more about what we're up to at both the fund and some of the companies that we're working on. It has been a pleasure to have you. I know you're living in New York. That's where you're at right now. But you're a California native like myself. So enjoy your holidays with your family in sunny San Diego. Thank you again, Anthony, for your time. We appreciate it very much. Thank you as well. Well, that does it for Trading the Close on this Tuesday. I'm Tony Valliere. Make it a great rest of the day.